all right hey guys welcome back to the channel my name is brian from k hex nation and in today's video again we're going over the four tellers for the keyblade war part three this time we're going over era and how to beat him now to be honest era in terms of requirements is actually not too difficult strictly like on paper in terms of requirements however <laughs> Because of the fact that he reflects all upright metal attacks, that makes things really difficult for us. Um, strictly because of the fact that at least at the time of making this video, all of the best metals and setups are pretty much entirely monopolized by upright metals. So there's only a handful of like reverse metals that provide metal strength buffs. So uh, it took me a bit of finagling trying to figure out how to get through this. So after a while, I ended up figuring it out. Um, it wasn't actually as difficult as I expected to be. TLDR, essentially the st strategy <laughs> that I used to beat ERA was simply just used a reverse setup with as many 60 uh, minus 60 ground traits as possible. A lot of uh, all of my medals have extra tech too, which also helps. But you want to make sure you have minus 60 ground at least preferably boast if possible all right so i just wanted to, i just threw on a bunch of metals that have minus 60 ground and i kind of just just did that so in terms of my setup this is what i did let me go ahead and show my setup real quick i went ahead and used my dark Knoll. now like i mentioned I'll, I'll pull up traits real quick for you guys as i mentioned before all of my metals have uh minus 60 yeah, minus 60, except uh, except Xemnas. Xemnas is the only one that doesn't have minus 60. But everything else has extra attack at the very least. All of my metals have extra attack. Uh, the only reason why I'm using Xemnas is purely for the metal strength buff, the reverse metal strength buff that he provides. Um, otherwise, I would have used a different metal. To be honest, I think it's possible that you could even beat this without any metal strengthening uh, abilities at all whatsoever. I'm not sure how much more difficult that would be, but I think it is possible. Um, so it's just, that's something just worth noting. Now, through my setup, I have Angelic Amber. Again, all of them have extra attacks. So it's copying uh, my Xemnas twice. So I'll have a total of like 6,000 reverse metal strength uh, applied by the time I reach slot four, in which case I'm using Roxas. Roxas has a uh, extra attack in my 60 ground. As well, yeah, yeah. And then I'm just using my Sephiroth again as well. Extra attack, minus 60 ground. And in my pet slot, I'm actually using the VIP metal Kingdom Hearts 3 Lich uh, for a couple reasons. One of them being that A, it's magic. So it'll do extra damage. B, it's reverse. So, you know, I can actually use it. It won't get reflected and kill me. Uh, C, it's for the supernova because of the fact it provides a what is it it provides a 3000 reverse metal strength buff when you use the supernova so i'll usually use that like immediately after i use Kyrie. and d because of the fact i mean just look at my traits <laughs> i have perfect traits for him so it, it was a no-brainer that i should use kingdom Hearts 3 lich uh so this is my setup again i don't think i i really don't think you need to use nearly as op of a setup as i do um nor do you probably need as high of a keyblade level as i do for dark Knoll. my dark Knoll is I yeah okay but it helps of course so without further ado we'll just uh jump right into it to be honest it's fairly straightforward um, in terms of strategy, there's not really nearly as much strategy for Ira compared to the other uh, foretellers. It's just more so whether or not you actually have the medals this time. Uh, do you have strong enough medals? That's that's reverse medals. That's pretty much all all it is for Ira. So we'll just go ahead and jump straight into it. For my friend medal, I actually am using uh, my friend's Kingdom Hearts 3 Lark scene that just recently came out. Uh, pretty much just because of for two reasons. A uh, it's one of the few reverse metals in the, or meta reverse metals currently in the game at the moment that, that provide uh, that metal strengthening ability. Uh, yeah, okay. Not only through its normal ability at 1500 speed, 
uh, metal buff, but also through its supernova as well, provides a thousand speed metal strength buff as well. So that was one reason. Second reason, for being, just being because of the fact it's reverse. So I, I don't have to worry about being uh, reflected. And third, because of the fact that it has really good traits. So that's why I ended up using kind of my friend's Kingdom Hearts 3 uh, Lark scene. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's jump right into it. Skip it. Avoid spoilers. Okay. All right. So kind of like the same thing with Gula. Because of the fact that they're not reflecting power specifically, it's reflecting upright. It is completely okay to start off with your Kyrie, or in this case, Shion's uh, supernova, in order to overwrite the opponent's general uh, defense buffs. Their defense buffs. Okay, get, just basically completely get rid of them. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Boom. Now we got rid of all of his defense buffs, and I'm gonna go ahead and use my kingdom Hearts 3 lish now because remember it provides that plus 3000 reverse strength buff for this one turn so use that here now i can just go ahead and just let my uh, uh, setup run it through its course um chances are that yura will counterattack sometime by the end of my setup just because of the fact that he does his counter he has revenge counters this time at 80 percent of his health and 50 percent of his health so it's yeah, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. We honestly don't have nearly as much restricting us compared to the last few uh, foretellers, which is pretty, pretty satisfying. Okay. If you happen to have a better setup on Missing Egg, that's probably your best bet, but I happen to do it on Dark Knight, which worked just fine for me. So there it is. So it reached 80% of his threshold um, and made him do his revenge counter. Now, if possible, you want to try and get him to use his revenge counter every single run through of your setup, just because of the fact that when he revenge counters before you actually finish, what happens is that you actually keep, you get to keep and maintain all of your metal strength buffs uh, that you received during, during that turn. So you can see in the top left hand corner, where my HP bar is, you can see I still have plus 10,500 strength buffs, reverse strength, which is absolutely huge to have at the very beginning of the turn. And it's just gonna keep stacking if I can keep getting his uh, revenge counter dress. So we're just gonna go ahead and continue. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and use another supernova. This time, this time we'll use Lark Scene. And we're just gonna let the setup run its course again. So you can see in the top left hand corner, like my strength is just constantly rising. Which just helps me do more damage. Soon we should be reaching 50%, a 50% threshold. Alright, now we're going to use a supernova just to kind of help force it a little bit. There it is. There's a wrench counter. Now we get to do it all over again. This time we have 18,000 strength starting off. Okay. And, and this time we don't have to worry about any more revenge counters just because of the fact that, well, we ran, we, we've already gone through all of his revenge counters. I'm also going to use a uh, Zemnis here to provide that to any. Oh, it's also worth noting. I kind of forgot to, to say it. But don't worry about uh, providing guilt buffs on the turns that you had a revenge counter happen, just because the fact that the uh, your guilt boosts do carry over as well. Not just your buffs and debuffs, but your, your guilt boosts do carry over too. And there we go. We beat Ira. Woo! <laughs> I mean, we had a ridiculous amount of extra strength. Well, we, had, we had, well, like, over 20,000 near 30,000 extra metal strength for my metals like of course i'm gonna just do like i'm just gonna be bursting out like damage with all the extra strength that my metals gain. So it's it's a little nuts so that's how you beat era it's honestly not too complicated again like i mentioned before you probably don't need metals or at least you don't need a lot of metals i would recommend at least like maybe one or two metals that have a uh, metal strengthening cap capabilities in your setup but you don't need a whole lot like i did in some of my other setups 
Yeah. Whew. But yeah. If you happen to beat Ira, go ahead and let me know uh, in the comment section down below. Uh, if you happen to find a different set that you think others might be able to benefit from, go ahead and let the people know in the comment section down below as well. Other than that, though, if you enjoyed the video, if you found it helpful, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. It's the best way I know when I upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian from KHUX Nation, and oh, oh, actually, before I end the video, I forgot to mention, I forgot to mention that depending on your union, okay, just a little FYI, uh, out of all five of the foretellers, you will not fight the foreteller that is the leader of your union. So in my case, I am Volps, so I will not fight Abba. However, I will be making a video. I'm going to transfer unions temporarily so I can actually fight off and make a video about it and stuff. Uh, but depending on whoever the leader of your union is, you will not fight them in the Keyblade. So just just little FYI out there. But yeah, other than that, hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.